Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for Game Week 36 for the 5% series. The idea being if you follow these suggestions, hopefully you'll do all right in your mini league, finishing the top 5% globally. Now this Game Week, Game Week 35 is not yet finished. There's a game tomorrow, Chelsea Tottenham, but I've got no chance of getting this video out after the game's finished tomorrow. So if any Chelsea or Tottenham players get injured and they get this little triangle by them, Obviously, let that affect your decisions. I don't know what's going to happen. We may be okay. All right, we start by looking at what happened in game week 35, as far as we know of the scores, and then what the suggestions are for game week 36. So for the goalkeepers, Pickford continues to do well. Everton at home are very good. Away from home, not so good, at least defensively. Onana, four. The other expensive keepers, nothing. For the cheaper keepers, nothing there. For the... Expensive defenders, Robertson 9, the rest did nothing. For the cheaper defenders, Branthwaite 6, the rest nothing. For the expensive midfielders, Saka 12, Sun 7, Fernandes 4. For the cheaper midfielders, Havertz 13, Gordon 10, Luis Diaz 5. And for the cheapest midfielders, Rice 6, Barnes 4. Regarding the forwards, the expensive forwards, Isaac 13, Haaland 5, nice to see him back. The rest nothing. The cheapest forwards, Munez 6, Kuna 5, and that's all. We're now going to look at the players for game week 36, and I'm going to assume you're bench boosting in game week 37. So next game week, you want to have 15 playing players. Hopefully most of them, possibly all of them, would be double game week players, because there's a handful of teams with two games next week. But they don't all have to be doublers. There's a handful of players that only have one game week that are perfectly fine to have. But if you're bench boosting, you definitely don't want to have any injured players or any players that are likely to be injured. If you're not bench boosting, then you just need enough players that are going to be playing and you don't need to worry about it so much. Now, if you make transfers this week with the bench boost in mind, you're running a slight risk that the players you're bringing in are going to get injuries. But that's up to you. And that's always the risk we take when we're buying players looking forward. It's also worth me saying, I think that there's a reasonable chance some of you will be taking hits this game week and next game week and possibly even game week 38. But certainly this game week and next game week, it's okay to take hits if it's making your squad stronger and it makes you better for the bench boost. Don't take hits for the sake of it though. If the players in your current squad are all white or green on what I'm going to be showing you now, then maybe you don't need to make a transfer. So regarding the goalkeepers, Vicario, away to Liverpool this game week, which isn't great, but... He's got a nice double next game week, as in two home fixtures. There's a chance of some decent points there. I massively favour home games. And then he's away to Sheffield United. So if one of your goalkeepers is a duffer, Vicario's fine to get. Ray is a fine keeper. I wouldn't be buying him. But if you've got him, he's absolutely fine to keep because he can get a clean sheet anytime because Arsenal are so good. Onana's got a nice double next game week. I say nice because it's two home fixtures. He could get a clean sheet in either of those. There's a chance you won't get a clean sheet in either one, but he's all right. Pickford. Pickford's an example of a player that if you've got him and you're bench boosting, you don't need to swap him out. On the double game week, he's at home to Sheffield United. He could easily get six to ten points. So I would keep him. There's no way I would sell Pickford for a Nana or Vicario, for example. But you want to make sure you've got two keepers, of course, if you're bench boosting. Leno, no point keeping him because next game week he's got Man City. You don't need to dump him this game week if you've got another game, if you've got another playing goalkeeper. But by the time you get to next game week, you don't want Leno in your team. For the cheaper keepers, Neto's not been chosen the last three game weeks. We need to assume he's not going to get any more games this season. So if you're bench boosting, definitely get rid of him. If you're not bench boosting, you may want to take him out because there's always a chance your playing keeper is not going to play. Petrovic's the cheapest double game week keeper that we've got in the system. He's all right. Henderson, away to Wolves in the double, not worth having, and home to Man United this game week. Dubravka, now he has got a double, but currently on the system, Pope is predicted to be back for the double, which means you no point having Dubravka because he's not going to get two games. So I would say don't get rid of Dubravka this game week, but just be aware that next game week you may want to sell him. 
But if it works with your plans to get rid of him this game week, that's fine as well. And Ariola, he's at home to Luton next game week. But I would rather have, for example, Petrovic if I could get to him because he has got two games as a chance of something there. Regarding the expensive defenders, so Virgil van Dijk, Liverpool, they're away to Aston Villa in the double. They're home to Tottenham this game week. And he is quite expensive. So if you've got him, it's fine to move him on to release some cash. Trippier, he's currently predicted to maybe be back for the double. The reason to sell him now would be to release some funds. I've got him. I'm not intending to sell him. I'm currently gambling on he's going to be back for the double. Um, but you may need that money to go elsewhere if you still got Trippier. So fine to keep. Absolutely don't buy Trippier. Don't buy any players that are orange, for sure. If you've got them, you can keep them. You don't have to sell them. Robertson. So I really like Robertson. But his double is away to Aston Villa and he's a fair bit of money. White is okay to keep, as is Saliba. So Pedro Porro, bad fixture this week, but next game week, he's got two home fixtures. Then he's got Sheffield United, and he's quite an attacking defender. Shah, I've got him as white because he's currently flagged as yellow. So I'd say don't buy Shah this week because we don't know for sure that he's fit. But equally, if you've got him, keep him. There's no point selling him. Gabriel's fine to keep. As for the cheaper defenders... Chilwell looks like he's out for the season. Probably just sell him. If you've got him, get rid of him. It's worth taking a hit to move him on. Dallo. So I've made him green. He's got a double next game week. They're both at home. Reasonable chance he's not going to get a clean sheet, but he does have a chance of attacking return. So I think he's worth having. Vardio. I, I added him this week. And then when I recorded this the first time, he wasn't appearing. And it wasn't until I got to the bench order... That I thought, hang on, where's Vardiel? So he's a Man City defender. They have four nice game fixtures the next three weeks. With any Man City player, you're running a risk that they're benched or maybe not even in the squad because they have so many good players. If he plays the next four games, he's worth having. If he doesn't, he's a little bit dodgy. So he's all right. He's quite popular. Lots of people are going to be buying him. I've not yet decided for myself if I'm going to buy him or not. I probably will make a defensive change at some point. But he's absolutely fine to get, probably. Eight Nori, he's just about all right to keep. If you're bench boosting, he's at home to Crystal Palace. He's a bit of an attacking defender. That is, he's home to Crystal Palace. Next game week in the double. If you've got the chance to move him on, it's okay. Like, possibly if you've got the money, you could do eight Nori to Vardio. That might be all right. But you don't have to move him on. Burn, he's nice and cheap. He's got a nice double. At least the Brighton game's a good chance of a clean sheet there next game. But he's worth having. Mitchell, not worth keeping. Branthway, another example of a single game week player. That's all right to take a punt on. If you've got Branthway, it's fine to keep him. But you can buy him if you need to release some funds elsewhere. He's probably just about all right. And then Gusto... Injury doubts, I wouldn't risk having Gusto, and I sold him this current game week just because I didn't want to risk it. Regarding the expensive midfielders, Mo Salah is expensive. I've marked him as sellable. If you need the money, that's a good place to get the money. If your squad's fine and you've got Salah and you want to keep him and it's not compromising your other 14 players, it's fine to keep. But I suspect if you've got at least one other expensive player, you may be struggling for funds a bit. So don't feel bad about selling salad to release funds. So Kevin De Bruyne, introducing him this game week. Four nice fixtures in the next three game weeks. It looks like he's likely to be playing every game now. So he is a good player to have. Son, he's a very good player to keep. He's got a double next game week. Then he's at home to Sheffield United. However, I've made him orange just in case you're really struggling with your funds. And selling Son allows you to have your 14th and 15th player better next week than it would be if you had to keep Sun. If you can afford to keep Sun, then it's fine to keep Sun. But don't feel bad about selling him if you need to. Saka's fine to keep, just about. He Like this game week and the last game week are good games. He could get something against Man United next week. Odegaard's fine. Fernandez. if you've been following this series, you know that I like Fernandez. I think he's the best United player. He's got Two home games next game week. He's worth having. 
the cheaper midfielders, Foden's worth having. Madison, although he's got a double next game week, I've made him orange because you may want to sell him because he's not performing great at the moment and you could get somebody cheaper. He is fine to keep, but don't buy him. Luis Diaz, I think it's worth selling him to release some money and get a double in instead of him. Havertz is, he's a good player, but he's only got a single next game week. Richarlison's got a double next game week. I've not made him green because he's only just back from injury. But he's probably fine to have. Personally, I would not be buying him at the moment. But if you've got him, he's fine to keep. It may be that next game week we make him green. At the moment, he's just white. Gordon, away to Burnley this game week. And then he's got a double next game week. He's cheapish. He's good. Regarding the cheapest midfielders, Palmer, you need to have him. Barnes, you don't have to sell him. He is sellable, but he has got a double next game week. The chances are you've got enough other moves to make. So that if you've got Barnes, he's all right to keep. But if you want to sell him, that's all right. As a, I think you should sell him. Johnson's nice and cheap. He's got a double next game week. I wouldn't go buying him, but he's all right. Yeah, you could buy him. If you need to get someone cheap in midfield, he's all right. Then Rice is nice and cheap. And then Garnacho's got a double next game week and he's nice and cheap. Regarding the strikers, Haaland... If you can get Haaland and you've not got him, I think it's worth getting him. He's a chance of being a good captain choice for the next three game weeks, assuming he stays fit. So if you've got Salah and not Haaland, I think it's worth selling Salah, getting in Haaland, and then getting a much cheaper midfielder and who's got double. Watkins, very good player. He is fine to keep. However, he's quite expensive. In the double game week, he's at home to Liverpool. So it's probably worth moving him on. Isaac's worth having a nice double next game week. Darwin's absolutely worth selling. Solanke, although he's a good player and he's going for the golden boot, probably not going to get it, and he's at home to Brentford next game week, there is an excuse to sell him if you can to release the funds to make the entirety of your 15 better. Regarding the cheaper forwards, Hoyland, I know other content creators are quite not very nice about him, but I think he's perfectly good. He's got a double next game. I say perfectly good. Obviously, there's better strikers, but at just 7.1, he may be a forward that you're going to want to have. Jackson. So I've made Hoyland green and not Jackson because personally, I'd rather have Hoyland than Jackson for the double next game week. But they're both kind of all right. Werner, unfortunately, is injured. He got a hamstring injury. had to go off. I think Werner's a good player. I was expecting... Lots of points from him, so apologies if you bought him. It's not entirely my fault he got injured, though. Kuna's nice and cheap at home to Palace in the double. It, if you've got him, it may be worth keeping him because he's so cheap. And then Munez, I've made him orange because in the double he's home to Man City, but it's okay to keep him if it helps you with your funds. So regarding the suggested bench order and the captaincy, this is just a suggestion but if you follow these suggestions blindly, you'll probably do all right. So the first keeper you see that you've got, I suggest, is the keeper that's on your bench. If you've got Neto, almost certainly not playing, bench him. Then Vicario away to Liverpool, Ariola away to Chelsea, Dubravka away to Burnley, Leno away to Brentford, Onana away to Palace, Henson at home to Man United. It's close between Henson and Onana, but I think Henson's probably got slightly more chance of a clean sheet. And then Pickford away to Luton. Luton are fighting for a Premiership survival. But Everton defensively generally are quite good. Definitely not so good on the road. But I think if Luton score, it would probably only be one goal. Two at the absolute most. And he may get a clean sheet. And then Petrick because they're at home to West Ham. And then finally Raya at home to Bournemouth. For the other players, the first player you see that you've got, I suggest is position three on your bench, the next one position two, the last one position one. And I'm showing all the players in the system apart from the six that are captaincy choices. So we have Aiton Nori, Mitchell, Solanke, Kuna, Branthwaite, Porro, Garnacho, Madison, Johnson, Eze, Barnes, Virgil van Dijk, Dallo, Byrne, Sharp, Trippier. I realise Trippier is almost certainly injured. But just in case he comes on, he could get something. Hoyland, Richarlison, Gusto, Rice, Gordon, Sun, Luis Diaz, Darwin, Jackson, Munez, Vardiol, 
Robertson, Fernandez, Saliba, Gabriel, White, Watkins, Isaac, Odegaard, KDB. And then for the captaincy choices, I'm suggesting any of these are fine captains. I think Haaland's certainly a very good choice. We don't know if he's going to get 90 minutes, but he doesn't need 90 minutes. Havertz is also a good choice for captain, as is Palmer. Any of those three are very good choices. Foden's a good choice. Saka's a good choice. Salah's a good choice. I would say the top three are the safer choices, but any of those six could do all right. I suggest choosing one of these as your captain, one as your vice captain, but make sure they're from different teams just in case the game gets abandoned. Haaland, I think, is going to be the safest choice regarding what happened with your rank. And even if you were chasing, I don't think it's worth going elsewhere. But you absolutely don't have to choose Haaland. And if you've not got Haaland, any of the other five are fine. I would say Havertz or Palmer would be the next best choice. But whatever you want. Regarding the background picture, that's supposed to be a charcoal sketch of Lewis Miley, who's a midfielder for Newcastle. He's injured just now. But today is May the 1st and it's his 18th birthday. And the reason I thought it'd be good to put him up is because he's now old enough to vote. And in a lot of places in the UK, there's voting tomorrow for whether it's a police commissioner or local councillors. Not everywhere, but a lot of places. So maybe tomorrow he's going to vote for the first time. And there we have it. And that took a long time because I had a player missing. I had to go back and do a whole load again. Um, I hope it made sense. And as always, I'll try and answer any questions that appear in the comments. Hope you have a nice time for Game Week 36. Thanks for watching. Bye.